In this video, we're going to look at the nth term of a geometric sequence. Let's start off with a geometric sequence. I'm going to give it first term of 3, so a is 3, and a common ratio of 2, so r is 2. I've just chosen these values. If we look at now the first term, that's when n is equal to 1, we will simply have now 3. So we say that 3 is a. If we look now at the second term, when n is 2, we need to multiply 3 by the common ratio of 2, which is going to give me 6. An expression for that could be now a multiplied by r, or a r. If we look now at the third term, when n is 3, we would multiply by 2 again, and that would give me 12. My expression would be a multiplied by r, multiplied by r again, which would be a r squared. If we look now at the fourth term, we would multiply by 2 again, that would be 24, and we'd multiply by the common ratio again. So our expression for the fourth term would be a r cubed. The fifth term would be 48, and an expression would be a r to the fourth. We can see that this power is one less than the value of n, such that if we went up to the nth term, our expression for that would be a r to the power of n minus 1. This now gives us the nth term of a geometric sequence. We can say a sub n is equal to a multiplied by r to the power of n minus 1. So, for example, a sub 4, and I say sub in terms of subscript, will be the first term multiplied by the ratio to the power of 3. And we can see this just here. If I have now the 22nd term, that will be the first term multiplied by the ratio to the power of 21. So this is often given in the formula book. You simply need to be able to use and apply it. So in question three, we're asked to find the seventh and 12th terms in each of the following sequences below. So in the first one, we've got a, that's the first term of four, and r is two. So a is four, and we've got now r is two. So just using the formula, we can say that a sub n is equal to a multiplied by r to the power of n minus 1. So if we want the seventh term, a7, seven, a sub 7, well that's going to be the first term, which is 4, multiplied by 2 to the power of 6. We can do this in a calculator or manually. 2 to the power of 6 is going to give me 64, so this will be 256. Again, if you want to check, you can simply type it in. You can write it like 4, uh, and then you can have 2 to the power of 6, or you can write it like so, or you can put a multiplication in. Let's now look at the 12th term, a sub 12. The 12th term is the first term, 4, multiplied by the common ratio to the power of 11. That is 12 minus 1. So all we're going to do is simply go ahead and do this, and that will now give us the value of 8192. So 8192. So the seventh term in this particular sequence is 256, and then the twelfth term is going to be 8192. Let's look at the next one. We've got a is equal to 0 0.5 or 1 half, and the ratio is going to be equal to negative 3. So using these values, we can now say that the seventh term, a sub 7, is going to be 0 0.5. And we're going to multiply this now by negative 3 to the power of n minus 1, which is going to be 6. So in the calculator, 0 0.5, and then we're going to have now negative 3, and we're going to raise that now to the power of 6. That's going to give me now 364.5, so 364.5. If we now look at the 12th term, a sub 12, we're going to have 0 0.5. We're going to multiply this by negative 3 now, and that will be to the power of 11.
So again, in a calculator, you could write 0.5 times by negative 3, entirely up to you on how you want to type this in, to a power of 11. And that's going to give us now 88573. So negative 88573.5. And that gives us now the 12th term. So nice and straightforward. OK, let's move on to question four. In question four, we're asked to find the ninth and 14th terms in each of the sequences below. This time, we have a first term, but we need to find the common ratio. So 15 over 5 is 3, 45 over 15 is 3, 135 over 45 is 3. So we can say A, the first term, is 5. The common ratio, R, is going to be 3. So all I'm going to do is go ahead and use these. So A9 will be equal to 5 times by 3 to the power of 8. So let's go ahead and work this out. So straight through the calculator, 5 times by uh, 3, so 3 to the power of 8. And that is going to give me 32805, so 32805. If we want the 14th term, A14, we're going to have now A, which is a first term, multiplied by 3 to the power of n minus 1, which is 13. So all I'm going to do is switch this over now and make that 13, and that will give us a value, 797. So 7971615. So that's now the 9th and 14th terms. OK, let's now do B. We can see that the ratio now, by doing the back division method we looked at, we would have the following. These now would give us, and I'll just put equals, let's put equals in these, uh, negative 1 over 2. So we can see on this particular one, the ratio is going to be equal to negative 1 half. And we've got a first term, A is equal to 8. If you didn't see the video prior to this, please check that out as we looked at finding the common ratio by back dividing or doing A2 over A1 is equal to A3 over A2, which is equal to A4 over A3. So let's now look at the ninth term. A sub 9 is going to be equal to 8 the first time times by negative 1 half to the power of 8. If you fancy a bit of a challenge, these are all powers of 2 if you want to work it out. Entirely up to you. Uh, let's just put in 0 0.5 and that's going to be to a power of 8. So that's going to give us 1 over 32. If we now look at the 14th term, A14 or A sub 14 as its subscript, we're going to have 8 times by now negative 1 half to the power of 13. So all I'm going to do is come through and change that over. Uh, what's that going to be? 1 over 2, 4, uh, negative 1 over 1 over 2, 4. There we go. They're powers of 2. So if you spot them, uh, let's put that in negative, negative 1 over 1 over 2, 4. OK, let's look at this one right here. We need the ratio. So we should now have a consistent ratio. It looks now, if we do 7 divided by 35, of that's 0 0.2 or 1 fifth. 1.4 divided by 7, that should give us 0 0.2 or 1 fifth. And 0.28 divided by the 1.4, again, that should give us 1 fifth. So the ratio is 1 fifth. So A is equal to 35 r is equal to one fifth or 0 0.2 so we can see this is going to get very small okay so what we can say then is the ninth term a9 is going to be equal to 35 multiplied by one fifth or 0 0.2 to the power of 8 so let's go ahead and do that 35 times by 0.2 or one fifth to the power of 8 and that is going to give me, what's that going to give me? 7 over 78125. 7 over 78125. I'll write that as an exact fraction. So that's the ninth term. So 35 times by 0 0.2 or 1 fifth to the eighth. And then the next one, all we're going to do is do a 14, the 14th term. And that'll be 35 times by it now. 1 fifth or 0 0.2 to the power of 13. Um, I think I'm going to have to write this now uh, in standard index form. I think that's going to be too, uh, too small a number now on here. What have we got? 2.87 times 10 to the negative 8. 
So 2.8, and I'll write it to three significant figures, uh, uh, to the negative 8, wasn't it? To the negative 8. Let's just check that. Uh, 2.87 uh, times 10 to negative 8, uh, and I'll just put in 3SF. So I've written the first one as an exact fraction. Um, it's just getting used to it. Okay, let's do uh, another question. In question five, we're asked to find the first term of the geometric sequence with second term nine and fifth term 243 over eight. All I'm going to do is write out an expression for the second term and the fifth term. I'll write out the fifth term first. The fifth term will be a r to the power of four. That's going to give me 243 over 8. If I write out the second term, we know that that is a r. This is going to be 9. What I'm going to do is call this one equation 1 and this one equation 2. We can use simultaneous equations and divide to eliminate a. So if I now at this stage do 1 divided by 2, that's going to give me a over a is 1 r to the fourth over r is going to give me r cubed. We subtract the powers. And that is going to give me now 2, 4, 3 over 8 divided by 9. So if we just do this, we've got 2, 4, 3. So 2, 4, 3. And then we can divide that by 8 and then by 9, which is the same as dividing by 72. And that gives me 27 over 8. So r cubed is equal to 27 over 8. If I take the cube root of this, r is going to be equal to 3 over 2. So from this, we can see now that r is going to be equal to 3 over 2. And I can simply substitute that back into here to find the value of a. So we know that a multiplied by r is going to be equal to 9. So from this, what we can see now, just simply sub it into equation 2, dividing by 3 times in by 2, a is going to be equal now to 6. So the first term, so first term is equal to 6. All I've done here is use my formulae and used an expression for each of these terms. I've divided to find one of the unknowns and simply sub that back in using simultaneous equations to find the first term. So there we go. That is um, a basic introduction to finding the nth term of a geometric sequence. In the next video, we'll work through some more questions like this and then some slightly more challenging ones. All you need to remember is that the nth term a sub n is equal to a multiplied by r to the power of n minus 1, where a is the first term. So this is the first term. R is the common ratio, so that's a ratio, and N is the number in the sequence.